For this question, you're gonna have to know the discriminant formula. And that formula determines how many solutions a quadratic equation will have. Let's go ahead and apply that to this question. We got a system of equations above where A and B are your constants. For which of the following values of A and B does the system of equations have exactly two real solutions? First, we gotta combine all of this information somehow. And we're gonna substitute this expression in for Y into the other equation. So that's gonna look like ax squared minus seven x equals bx minus three. In order for us to use that discriminant formula, you're gonna to have to equal this to zero. So we gotta get rid of those terms. Subtract bx and add a three. Those are gonna cancel out. So now on the left side of that equation, you're gonna get ax squared minus seven x minus bx. You can't combine those plus three equals zero. So for me to use this discriminant formula, I need an A, a B, and a C, which are the constants of that quadratic equation. You can actually combine these somehow because out of those two, we can factor out an X. And if I factor out an X from those middle terms, I'll be left with negative seven minus B. And that is going to represent the constant for the letter X. We might as well write it like this. It means the same thing. Drop everything else down and from here, we are ready to use that discriminant formula. In my discriminant formula, this is going to represent my A. This is going to represent my B. And this is going to represent my C. And for it to have two real solutions, then B squared minus 4AC has to be greater than 0. Let's substitute my A, B, and C to the discriminant formula. Starts off with B squared. So my B is negative 7 minus B squared minus four times my a is just a and my c is three and all of that has to be greater than zero in order for this to have two real solutions i think it's just going to be a lot faster if we don't distribute that out but over here we can multiply four times three might as well 12 a that has to be greater than zero so that is the key part of this problem from here I think the fastest route is just to substitute my values in for A and B one by one. So if you wanted to test out A using this, it's going to be a pain, but it should be pretty fast. It's going to be negative seven minus negative two, because that's my B value. And be careful with that double negative there. Minus 12 times three better be greater than zero. If you do that really quick. All of this is going to be negative five squared and negative five squared is 25 minus 36. I know that's not gonna be it because that's gonna be a negative number. And now we gotta just do that one by one. Doing that again, except our B value is zero, minus 12 and my A value here is five. Well, all of this is going to equal 49. 12 times five is 60. That's gonna get me a negative number. So that's a false statement. That's not gonna work. Doing that again, negative seven minus two squared minus 12 times seven. Is that gonna be greater than zero? 81 minus 84, that's not gonna be greater than zero. And how unfortunate that it's the last one, but at least we know that that's gonna be our answer. Negative seven minus four squared minus 12 times nine has to be greater than zero. This is gonna be a negative 11 squared, which is 121 minus 12 times nine. 108. You don't have to compute it, but we know that it's going to be letter choice D. That's one of the harder questions I've seen, and hopefully that was a good review. If it was, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.